Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Our Turtle House Digital Fireside. My name is Mark Williams, and I'm your host. And thank you so much for joining us tonight. It's going to be a fantastic fireside. And we've got three new speakers that we've never had on a fireside before, all thanks to you. You've given us your ideas on people you'd like to hear from. And we are excited to have three new speakers and a brand new topic that we've never covered before. So thank you so much for joining us for tonight's Fireside. I'll introduce our speakers in just a minute, but in case you haven't yet, go to turtle.link slash app and download the Our Turtle House app. It's 100% free and there's so much content that you can get 100% free. We've got a brand new podcast from Carmen Rasmussen Herbert who is on American Idol called Doing Good. And she interviews people from all around the world about the ways that she does good, the way, the way that they do good in the world. And uh, there's content from Meg Johnson and Hank Smith and John, by the way, and many of your other favorite speakers. And just like I said before, we love getting your ideas. So go to turtle.link slash share and let us know what you love about these firesides or people that you'd like to hear from in the future. Let's Share a few people who wrote in this week. Jenna said, thank you so much for these firesides. They truly are a highlight of my week. I'm always inspired, uplifted, and motivated to be better as I listen to the wonderful speakers. Jenna, thank you so much for writing in, and we're so glad that you have enjoyed these firesides. We love putting them on. And this next comment comes from Natalie, who says, I love all of your firesides. They always bring me peace, happiness, and joy. Thanks very much. Natalie, this is exactly why we do them. We're glad that that the firesides have brought you a little bit of peace, especially through the, all the craziness that we're dealing with in the world right now. So thank you so much for writing in, and, and we're glad that you and your family have enjoyed them. Tonight's topic is finding blessings, and it comes from Megan. Megan, thanks for writing in and sharing your feedback, and we're so excited to talk about how we can find blessings in our life. With that, let me introduce our speakers. We've got some amazing speakers tonight. Our first is named Mary Ellen Edmonds. Mary Ellen Edmonds has served four missions. She directed a health project for children in Africa. She served on the Relief Society General Board for 11 years. She was a director of training at the Missionary Training Center in Provo, Utah, and she's written a number of books as well. She turned 80 years old this year but she still does her own stunts. Let's welcome to the fireside, Mary Ellen Edmonds. Mary Ellen, how are you doing? Happy, happy to be here. Thank Good. you. Thank you so much for being here. We'll go ahead and introduce our next speaker. Jason Harwood runs the Help Me podcast, the Help, Help Me Understand the Book of Mormon podcast, excuse me, with over 1 million downloads. And that's quite an accomplishment. He's a former seminary teacher and EFY speaker and also works a day job as well. He and his wife, Brooke, live in Cuna, Idaho, and they've got seven kids and no pets. They've got seven kids. Are you crazy? They don't want any pets, he says. <laughs> and he loves to teach and talk about Christ and God's word. Let's welcome Jason Harwood. Jason, how are you doing? Great, great. Happy to be here. Thank you so much for being here with us tonight, Jason. And our final speaker is Emily Freeman. Emily Freeman took her first creative writing class in high school and has loved writing ever since. She co-hosts a YouTube channel called Don't Miss This and is the author of several best-selling books, including Grace Where You Are. There is nothing Emily enjoys more for breakfast than a bowl of coconut ice cream, raspberries, and chocolate chips. I like that. <laughs> Other favorites include parades, vacations, fireworks, and going for long walks with a good friend. She and her husband, Greg, live, live in Lehigh, Utah, and are parents of five children, whom, of course, she adores. Let's welcome Emily Freeman. Emily, how are you doing? Doing great. So happy to be here. Oh, thank you all for joining us tonight. Let's go ahead and get things started off right with an opening prayer. Emily, go ahead and take care of this for, that for us, if you will. Heavenly Father, we're so grateful for this opportunity we have to be together tonight all across the world, wherever we may be. We're grateful for the spirit and for the uplift that we will experience here together. And we ask for a special blessing upon those of us who will be presenting and everyone who will be listening whenever that may be, that they will feel that uplift of the spirit and strength in their home. And we say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Emily. We'll go ahead and have you and Jason go backstage for a few minutes and I'll hang out with Mary Ellen. Amen. Mary Ellen. You've had quite the experience all, ar all around the world with being on the Relief Society General Board and, and writing books and working on projects yes, in Africa. That's, uh, that's quite, uh, and, and the fact that you do your own stunts, that's amazing. <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah. 
<laughs> well, we're so excited to have you. I got to do we're EFY so too. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's amazing. That's amazing. Well, we're so excited to have you with us today. So go ahead and take it away. We're so excited to hear from you. Thank you. Greetings, everyone, no matter where you are. I am so happy to participate in this uh, wonderful fireside. Um, whenever I think of finding blessings and celebrating Thanksgiving, which have been just brought me so many blessings in all the years of my life, I can't help but think of the blessing we had on Friday to hear from the prophet who was inspired, who was asked to give a message to everyone. And with all the surprises of this uh, unusual year, I know I'm not the only one who feels so grateful for the comfort and guidance for the light and truth from heaven. I wonder what it had been like to have, it have, uh, to have had an announcement that Moses was going to share a message. And then I remember something from the Doctrine and Covenants, section 107, verses 91 and 92. It reads thus, And again, the duty of the president of the office of the high priesthood is to preside over the whole church and to be like unto Moses. Behold, here is wisdom, yea, to be a seer, a revelator, a translator, and a prophet, having all the gifts of God which he bestows upon the head of the church. I am so thankful for President Nelson and for all those at the, on the earth at this time who have been sustained and called as prophets, seers, and revelators. I consider that my best blessings and gifts offered by the Savior and the gospel that have been shared through scriptures and prophets and other leaders and answers to prayers. These are my best blessings. I posted a note on Facebook a few days ago about an idea that came to me when I couldn't go to sleep one night. The 12 days of, of Thanksgiving. It did not include 12 drummers drumming or a partridge in a pear tree, but it was just the idea that on that 12 days before Thanksgiving, we write down 12 things that we're thankful for. And then the next day we write down 11. And then whatever comes next. I was never good at math. But it's been... Um, a wonderful exercise for me to make these lists of blessings every day. A few years ago, I was on a, a trip to Salt Lake for some reason from Utah County. And I decided that I would out loud list all the blessings I could think of for which I was thankful. And so on, on about uh, an hour for about an hour before I got to where I was going, I just started listing all the blessings I could think of. In my mind, I went through my house, I went through the neighborhood, I kind of went through my life, and I just began listing blessings. And then uh, when I got to where I was going, and I had a little thought, and that was something someone gave me a while ago. And it went something like this. What if you only had today those things for which you thanked God yesterday? Something like that. Well, I forgot one thing that just startled me. It's usually in my top 10 or so. I forgot to thank Heavenly Father for water. Now, I've lived several places in my life where we had no running water at all, sometimes a little bit, off and on, and it was never safe water. So it took a long process and a long time to get a drink of water. I'm so thankful for water, for safe, clean water. And I personally think it's more important than oil. <laughs> That's just me. Anyway, the idea of finding blessings is intriguing. And so is the idea of being thankful for blessings. For me, this includes remembering to thank others for their kindness to me. And oh, I have so many who've been so kind. I've tried to do a good job of that, but I know I'm not perfect at it. Many years ago, at about midnight, I was climbing the stairs to the door of my apartment after a long, tiring shift at the hospital. And there on the doorstep was a beautiful bouquet of flowers. I got inside, put everything down, and I picked up the card that was attached to the vase. It was a long thank you note with many kind thoughts about me. Not all of them were true, but they sounded really good. Even before I finished reading it, I was thinking of thanking whoever gave those beautiful flowers to me. But they didn't sign the note. 
What? Think about it, boys and girls. <laughs> I had to be nice to everyone. <laughs> what a wonderful, kind, beautiful, dirty trick. <laughs> I thought of friends, neighbors, people I worked with at the hospital, even my family. Well, for the next two weeks, I had to be nice and kind to everyone, just in case. This might be something you could use as an idea. If you ever need an idea to mess up the two weeks of someone's life, this would be a, a good way to do it. One of the blessings, friends, from that anonymous gift was that I imagined it could be anyone, like at the hospital. I was, I'm a nurse, I was a nursing supervisor, so I worked with a new almost everyone there. The hospital wasn't very big back then in the 1800s. And everyone I was in contact with became a suspect. He could have done it. She could have done it. All my neighbors and friends and family members were also suspects. It was a very interesting two weeks. I learned a lot. I learned, for one thing, that it's good to suspect everyone of being kind and good and wonderful. I had to feel grateful for everyone. Gratitude is an essential quality for anyone who is yearning to be more like the Savior, more loving, more patient, kinder, less judgmental. I love this thought about kindness. On a day when you can be anything, be kind. Albert Schweitzer, a great humanitarian, said this, you must give some time to your fellow man, even if it is a little thing. Do something for those who have need of someone's help, something for which you get no pay but the privilege of doing it. He said, even if it is a little thing. When Elder and Sister Abrea moved here from Argentina, I had a chance to visit with her one day. She told me how hard it was to leave her mother. She was an only child, and she and her mother were very, very close. And every Tuesday, her mother would come over and bring some Swiss chard from her garden. It was just a, a little thing they had together. Well, you know when a new general authority is called, he's busy. He's on trips. He's learning. And she was left alone a lot and was lonely. One day, it was Tuesday in the morning, she was working on a wedding dress for her daughter and she began thinking about, oh, if my mother could only bring me some Swiss chard and visit me, it's Tuesday morning. That was our, that was our habit. Well, a short time later, the doorbell rang. So she went to the door and it was a young mom whom she recognized from the ward. She didn't know her very well, but she looked nervous. And she said, oh, Sister Abrea, um, I was just doing the dishes and I had this strong impression to go pick some Swiss chard and bring it to you. I don't know if you know what Swiss chard is, but anyway, you can imagine what that meant to Sister Abrea. She said she knew that God loved her, was aware of her, and knew that she needed that sweet surprise that day. You know, I thought, well, what would I do if Heavenly Father said, go pick some Swiss chard and take it to somebody you don't know? I probably would have laughed and continued washing the dishes. I love this quote. On a day when you can be anything, be kind and be grateful. Gratitude is said to be the healthiest of all human emotions. The more we express gratitude for what we have, the more likely we are to be more aware of the blessings which are around us. Gratitude makes us happy. It decreases stress. It improves sleep. It helps us heal. It improves our relationship with others. Start every day with expressions of gratitude and your day will be better, more positive, more enjoyable. And don't spoil your enjoyment of what you have by whining and thinking about what you don't have. That's a trap. So on a day when you can be anything, be kind and be grateful. Once I was in another city and uh, could attend the first part of sacrament meeting before catching a plane back home. And I noticed uh, 
the brother that was counting the people there was walking down the aisle, kind of looking right and left. And a little boy sitting right in front of me looked about six or seven years old. When the man got to him, he reached out his hand and shook his hand. I think he thought perhaps the man was looking for his family to sit by them or something. That really touched me. And then once at the, at the hospital, there was a patient coming in to have a baby who only knew Spanish. And they, didn't, they couldn't find anybody who really spoke Spanish except one nurse had learned how to sing I Am a Child of God in, in, in English. She sang it in English, sorry, to the woman who only knew Spanish, but she recognized the tune and it became a real uh, comfort to her. Somebody named Grace Hines, I love that name, Grace, uh, wrote this little poem about little things. Oh, it's just the little homely things, the unobtrusive friendly things, the won't you let me help you things that make our pathway light. And it's just the jolly joking things, the never mind the trouble things, the laugh with me, it's funny things that make the world seem bright. So here's to all the little things, the done and then forgotten things, the oh, it's simply nothing things that make life worth the fight. I pray that your Thanksgiving will happen more than on just one day this year, that we will learn to express thanks every day for the many, many kindnesses and blessings which come to us. I close with counsel from the Doctrine and Covenants, section 59, verse seven. Thou shalt thank the Lord thy God in all things. Oh, how I thank him for his son, for the gift of his son, for the gift of the Holy Ghost, for tender mercies, and for the blessing of being with you for a few minutes today. In the name of Jesus Christ, Savior, Redeemer, amen. Amen. Mary Ellen, thank you so much for sharing that with us. I love how you talked about how gratitude, gratitude is a choice and we, we find what we're looking for. If we're looking for ways to be gratitude, ways to be grateful and things that are going well in our life instead of just whining and complaining about the things that aren't, you know, that, that everything goes better. I, I love that. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. You're welcome. Yeah, I uh, have my little day planner that I set on my desk in the morning. And one of the things that I do every morning is write down three things I'm three specific things I'm grateful for right then. And it's it's kind of an interesting exercise when you start really having to think about, gosh, what's something I'm I'm grateful for? And I think I'm going to write about a dozen anonymous nice letters and send them out today. Seriously. <laughs> Just to cause some trouble for people. Yeah, I loved the thought of those flowers just waiting on your doorstep after a really long day of work. And the fact that it just wasn't the little uh, floral card, but that someone really had taken the time to write down what they were grateful for about you. It made me think, I want to do that between now and Thanksgiving. I just oh, want really. to take the second to think of one person who I can put flowers on the porch. So mm -hmm. such a great invitation. Totally. There's there's so many little things that that may seem in, insignificant to us, but that can mean the world to somebody else. It's it's. I love I love what you shared today, Mary Ellen. Thank you so much for for sharing your testimony and, and your personal stories and everything. And for those of you that are watching at home, let us know in the comments what you liked about Mary Ellen's talk as well. We'd love to to have you interact and interact with the with you in the comments as well. So thank you so much, Mary Ellen. We'll go ahead and move on to our next speaker. Jason, how are you doing, my friend? Oh, so good. This is such a blessing for me to be here with you guys tonight. My goodness, the, the information already has been amazing. And, and we Jesus. still get to hear from Emily. So, I mean, gosh, what a, what a night to just soak in some positivity heading into Thanksgiving week. Seriously, seriously. This is, I love, I love doing these firesides every week. I, I feel like I'm just taking notes from all the speakers <laughs> just over and over and over. I'm learning so many things. So yeah, I'm excited to, to hear what you have to share as well. You, I know you've been, uh, you've, you've had quite the array of experience with the podcast. I mean, a million downloads. That's, that's impressive. I've got a little, a little podcast, but it's nowhere near a million downloads. That's amazing. Oh, well, <laughs> that's because I've been doing it for, you know, 20 years now. I mean, <laughs> but, but I have been doing it for about five years. So That's amazing. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's it's mostly it's just fun. I just sit down every <laughs> every morning, almost well, two or three times a week, and just talk about the Book of Mormon. And so for me, it, it's spectacular. Um, and we're going to talk about the Book of Mormon and finding blessings. Totally. Um, and and Mark, I asked you to stay on for a minute here, and yeah, we're going to yeah. do a quick exercise. Okay. This is yeah. so fun to do. You can do this with your families. Uh, after the fireside tonight, maybe just do it with your family and you'll be amazed at what you're about to hear. Um, so Mark and I are going to introduce ourselves to each other, but we're not going to introduce ourselves as though it's November 2020. We are going to introduce ourselves as though it's November 2030, Whew. 10 years from now. 10 years from now. So if I, I'm going to go first, I'm going to say, hey, Mark, I'm Jason Harwood. It's November 2030. And strangely enough, I'm in my 50s, and I need just a moment to calibrate here, but it's likely I'm now a grandpa because my kids are now 28, 25, 25, 24, 22, 21, and 17. Wow. And I'm, yeah, I got, I got six 20-year-olds and a teenager, uh, and I live in beautiful Idaho still, I think, <laughs> 10 years from now. And I don't run a podcast because in 2030, podcasts don't exist anymore because there's some new difference. I don't know. Can you imagine how we consume oh, content in 2030? Mark, your turn. Unreal. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, it's going to be unreal what, what uh, technology comes up with, like that Google Glass, you know, where you just wear glasses and... <sighs> And you can listen to podcasts or anything. Uh, so, yeah. So this is November 2030. And uh, I've got a wife with a, a handful of kids that we're raising. And and I have no idea what ages they are because, you know, I can't keep track of that stuff. <laughs> but uh, but they're growing and they're healthy. They're growing and they're healthy. And uh, I, I, I'm a, a, an author and a speaker and I've hiked some of the highest mountains in the world, including every, every, uh, the highest point in all 50 states. And, uh, and I currently live on the beach in Hawaii. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Working for our turtle house, right? Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, and I love this exercise. Thank you, Mark, for doing that with me. This Again, is kind, this of your fun. It's kind of fun to think about. Yeah. 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 And, you know, I mean, it's fun because I have a, a 28 year old or an 18 year old right now for him to think about where he's going to be 10 years from now. That that's oh. a made. I mean, those are big life changes that are going to big happen. Big time, big time. And I'm going to probably be a grandpa. Oh, my oh God. man. <laughs> crazy. Oh, crazy. Time goes by way too fast. Yeah. Well, go ahead and take it away, my friend. Thank you. So um, when we talk about finding blessings, I love to do that exercise because I don't know about Mark, but if I think about where I'm going to be 10 years from now, I can almost guarantee no matter what I come up with, it's not going to be very accurate. And that's because I can look back 10 years ago and think about what I thought my life was going to be like now, 10 years ago, and it's nothing like what it is right now. Um, and when I think about this uh, exercise. There's one person in the scriptures, one group of people in the scriptures that really comes to mind because there's no possible way they could have ever imagined what their life was going to be like 10 years ago. We just recently studied about them in Come Follow Me. And I want to talk with you about finding blessings with the story of the Jaredites. Can you imagine being Jared or the brother of Jared? and trying to pr project out what 10 years would be like, there's no way possible they would have come up with, well, the, the people in Babylon are gonna build this really tall tower. And so God's gonna confound the languages. And so we're gonna pray that our family gets and friends get saved from that. And so God's gonna do that. And then he's gonna send us across the wilderness. And then we're gonna have to build some barges with some holes in them. And we're gonna spend 344 days crossing the ocean. The only light we're gonna have is from some rocks that God touches. And then we're gonna land on a new continent. That's what their 10 year uh, future looked like. There's absolutely no way. They could have imagined that. And that's one of the things that I've learned is as we look at finding blessings, we can almost be guaranteed that the blessings will not be in the place we think they're going to be. 
I thought I knew where my blessings were going to be 10 years ago and they weren't there. I thought I know where my blessings are gonna be 10 years from now. And it's unlikely that that's where God has them for me. That's not where he had them for the brother of Jared. If we go to our scriptures in Ether, and, and we'll just skip ahead in Ether chapter one, verse 34, the, the uh, languages are being confounded. And all of a sudden, the Jaredites, the Jared and the brother of Jared, their whole community, their, their entire lives are thrown into upheaval. That sounds a little like 2020, right? Like, could you, there's no way even a year ago we would have imagined where we'd be right now with all of the world upheaval that has gone on. And so uh, the blessings that we've received this year, if we do um, what Sister Mary Ellen encouraged us to do and look for blessings and find blessings, there's blessings we have found this year in a year of complete upheaval and a total change to everything we've ever done. But we would have never imagined a year ago where those blessings would be because the blessings that we will find are unlikely to be in the place we think they are. The blessings for the brother of Jared, all of a sudden verse uh, 34, the, the language is being confounded and, and all of a sudden the blessings are not where they thought they were going to be. They thought their blessings were going to be in Babylon. They thought their blessings were going to be in raising their families right there in the community, in the town, in the place they lived, doing the things they had always done. They thought that's where their blessings were going to be. But God had something different for them. And in fact, God had something better for them. Uh, Elder L. Todd Budge in a conference talk recently said something interesting about the story of the brother of Jared. He said the account of the Jaredites' journey to the promised land can be used as a metaphor for our journey through mortality. So when we read the story of the brother of Jared, it's a metaphor for our journey. So when we think about our journey to finding blessings, it's important to note that they didn't find their blessings in the place they were. And they didn't find their blessings in the place they thought they were going to find their blessings. No, they had a big journey. They had a big travel to go through. They had big obstacles to overcome. They had a great ocean to cross. They had a great sea, as the scriptures call it, to get through. And so if the story of the brother of Jared is a metaphor for our life, we can expect not to have to cross continents and go to a whole new place, but we can't expect a journey. We can't expect a great sea. We can't expect challenges and problems in the search for our own journey. But don't worry, Elder Budge said the following as, as a promise for us, let me, I'm trying to bring up my little slide here. There we go. Elder Budge gave us a promise and God gave us a promise in Ether chapter one, verse 42. He said, there I will meet thee and I will go before thee into a land which is choice above all the lands of the earth. Ether one, verse 42. God's promise as we search and as we try to find blessings, I will meet thee and I will go before thee. Those are two critical promises. I will take thee to a choice land above all the lands of the earth. The brother of Jared and his family, they were looking for blessings. They were trying to find blessings in Babylon, but God said, the, the blessings I want for you are not there. You can find blessings, but I've got to take you somewhere else. I've got to take you to a place better than what you can imagine greater than what you have in mind, a place that is choice above all the lands of the earth. I don't think the brother of Jared and his family were thinking that. Before it happened, I don't think they had in mind that they were in the next 10 years going to land in a place that God would call choice above all the lands of the earth. No, they were happy right where they were. They thought the blessings were gonna come right where they were. They thought that everything great was going to happen to them right where they were and God said, no, I've got to take you someplace better. As you're looking to find blessings, it could be that God needs to take you somewhere better. Um, Elder Budge said, if we are faithful in keeping our covenants, we too will one day arrive safely home and will bow before the Lord and shed tears of joy for the multitude of his tender mercies in our lives, including the sorrows that made space for more joy. It's an interesting concept and one you can think about and ponder. The sorrow that made space for more joy. Sorrow seems to expand our heart and open 
the opportunity for more joy. The scriptural promise in Ether 142, I will meet you and I will go before you from God. And our promise from uh, Elder Budge in a recent conference talk is that there is that same blessing waiting for each of us. We will, we too, as Elder Budge said, will arrive safely home. So how did they do it? What are some of the things that they did to get through that? I love one of the first and most important lessons. Let's look in um, Ether chapter one, verse 34. Jared goes to his brother and says, cry unto the Lord that he will not confound uh, us, that we may not understand our words. Verse 35, the brother of Jared did cry unto the Lord. Verse 36, cry again unto the Lord. Verse 37 came to pass that the brother of Jared did cry unto the Lord. Uh, verse 39 came to pass that the brother of Jared did cry unto the Lord. Chapter two, they go on their big journey. And and somehow in that process, they kind of forget to cry unto the Lord because in uh, verse 14, it says, at the end of four years, the Lord came unto Jared again and spoke with him for the space of three hours and chastened him because he did not remember to call upon the Lord. So verse 15, the brother of Jared did cry unto the Lord again in verse 18, he did cry unto the Lord. And in verse 22, he did cry unto the Lord. And if you go to chapter three, verse one, he did cry unto the Lord. Now, you know, probably enough of the story to know what many of those prayers were about. Please don't confound our language. Please don't confound the language of our friends and family. Should we leave Babylon? Yes, leave Babylon and go. And he cried unto the Lord through that process. Then he, he kind of slips up and, and most of us have gone through that process, right? Where we're doing good. We're, yeah, doing all the little things we're supposed to be doing. We're doing all of the uh, scripture answers, right? The, 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 the common answers that we always hear. Uh, Meg Johnson, I think, talked about this in a recent one of our live firesides about the primary answers. And those are the simple things. Saying our prayers, reading our scriptures. They were doing those things, right? You've done those things. And maybe you too, in the process of finding blessings, have slipped into a pattern of not doing it. So did the brother of Jared. They slipped into a little pattern of not doing the basic things, crying unto the Lord. And the Lord says, hey, you need to fix that. And he said, okay, so we fixed it. And, and so one of the first steps for us as we look at crying unto the Lord, as we look at finding blessings, is understanding first that they may not be where we think they're going to be. And two, it's going to take a lot of prayer. This whole process is about the brother of Jared and his process of praying to God, finding answers, guiding him and his family, guiding their little community through the direction of God to find blessings along the way as they went. And God poured down blessings on them in every little step across the way. Now they ran into two big problems. And if your life is anything like mine in your process of finding blessings, you've run into problems. As I, as I said, as I look back 10 years ago, I'm pretty certain I would not have guessed where my blessings would have come from because I wouldn't have pegged on losing a job. I wouldn't have pegged on, on um, having to move. I wouldn't have pegged on having to go through divorce. I wouldn't have pegged on having to deal with custody arrangements and not seeing my kids all the time. Those were not the sorrows I had in mind that would expand so that I could take in more joy, as Elder Budge said. Those are not the things I would have picked. And yet through each one of those experiences, I've seen God's hand. I have felt the fulfillment of that promise. I will meet you and I will go before you. And I have seen, similar to the brother of Jared, that while the blessings that I thought I was going to get are not the blessings that I have. The blessings that I have, as, as he says in verse uh, 42, are choice above all. I've been blessed to have an incredible career. Part of that process was losing a job. I've been blessed to be married to a wonderful woman and to have uh, incredible children in my life. And that, you know, Sadly, there was some difficulties I had to go through to get here. Um, but as I look at the blessings of my life, I think, man, I wouldn't have these things now if I hadn't gone through those things there. They faced two big challenges. One, of course, was that they didn't have any light. The other, of course, was they didn't have uh, uh, air. 
And sometimes, man, it feels like that in our journey. Sometimes it feels like, boy, I don't have the the light. I feel like maybe I'm in darkness. Maybe I feel like I don't I don't have what I need, right? They needed air. I don't have what I need to find my blessings. But again, the brother of Jared teaches us such a powerful lesson as he cries unto the Lord. The Lord forgave him of some things he had done, maybe some mistakes he had made. Verse 14, Lord said, hey, you're going to need to fix this in your life. And the brother of Jared fixed it. And God blessed him. God gave him light. God gave him air. If you feel like, man, I don't have the things in my life I need to be successful. I don't have the blessings. I don't have the setup. I don't have the situation. I'm not as fortunate as somebody else. I don't have you know, the basics of what I need. You might feel just like the brother of Jared. I don't have light. I don't have air. And the story of the brother of Jared is Elder Budge taught us is a metaphor. God can provide those things for us. I want to share one more set of quotes. This is from another talk uh, by Linda S. Reeves. She was speaking in a uh, General Relief Society meeting, and she says, sisters, I do not know why we have the many trials we have but it is my personal feeling that the reward will be so great, so eternal and everlasting, so joyful and beyond our understanding. She went on to say, and I have highlighted some of the key words here. I believe that if we could daily remember and recognize the depth of love our heavenly father and our savior have for us, I'm going to break from Sister Reeves for a minute. I'm just going to tell you real quick. One way to do that is to do exactly what Sister Mary Ellen told you to do. And that is to write down things that you're thankful for every day. Note things that you're thankful for every day. President Eyring taught us that in a great uh, conference talk called uh, Remember, Remember, where he said he started writing down three things God had done for him every day. And he started to see exactly what Sister Reeves is asking us to see, the depth of our Heavenly Father and our Savior's love for us. But when we do that, Uh, we would do anything to be back, surrounded by their love eternally. She says those trials will be the very thing that qualify us for eternal life and exaltation. As we're finding blessings, they will likely not be in the place you think they will be. You will likely have to go through difficulty, challenge, and trial to get there. You will likely sometimes feel like maybe there's no light, maybe there's no air, Maybe you don't have the things that you need to be successful. Maybe the situation is is gotten to a place where God's light can no longer come in. And the story of the brother of Jared teaches us there's always light. There's always a way. We can always turn to God. God will meet us. God will lead us. And he has choice blessings for each and every one of us, different than what we might think, but beyond what we can imagine. And as Uh, Sister Reeves taught us we should and can do everything possible to one day be wrapped again in the embrace of love of our Savior and our Heavenly Father as we feel their love in our lives. And I share that in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Jason, I love that. Just where how you shared that sometimes we've got to go through hard things, but the hard things are not necessarily bad, that we can grow from them and and our life can be improved from them. I remember talking with a, with a lady who'd gone through some, she got burned really, really bad. I think most of her body was burned. And, and about three years later, she was asked, would she go through it again if she could, if she could? And she's like, yeah, I would, I would, knowing what I know now, I would hands down go through this horrible experience again because of who I've become. And I know Meg Johnson, who's on a lot of these firesides, mm-hmm. has said something similar with with uh, her accident and falling off of, of, of a cliff that she she even says that she would happily jump because of what she knows now. I love I love how you shared how you shared that about finding good in our circumstances. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yep. They're, they're still incredibly painful, right? It's no, like, no doubt. It's, <laughs> it's not like, it's like oh, yeah, let's, <laughs> you know, yeah. it's, like it's fun or anything. <laughs> But yeah. uh, but that there's always, I I think the idea is just that that the circumstances are not necessarily ideal, but God can make, God can turn them into something great. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I love how you talked about too the principle that one that I have been studying and watching for this year as I've been reading scriptures. That one verse in the story of the brother of Jared when the Lord says, "There I will meet you." and I will be with you and um, until you get to 
the promised land and just that promise from the Lord that he's going to meet us in our story and walk with us the entire way. I love that, that blessing, that promise. Yeah. So good. Mary Ellen, anything that you else, anything you'd like to add? I'm just so glad I got to hear that message. I, You've given me a lot to think about, a lot to ponder. There are quite a few mountains in my life. I live in the mountains, and uh, I enjoy visiting with my Heavenly Father up here in the mountains. Thanks for your message. It's wonderful. Thank you so much, Jason, for, for sharing those personal stories and, and your testimony as well. We'll go ahead and move to our final speaker. Our final speaker of the eve evening, Miss Emily Freeman. How are you doing, Emily? Doing great. Oh, I'm just soaking up the uh, your background, the the fireplace and the stockings and everything. And oh, it's, it's so fun. So holidays are my favorite time, and the thought of family. So it's there's so really good. nothing better than that. With yeah. Thanksgiving and Christmas, it's just, it truly is the best time of the year. I love it. Yeah. Well, go ahead and take it away. I'm excited to hear what you have to share with us. Awesome. Thank you. Um, I've loved this conversation. It's given me a lot of things to think about, but also has reminded me about a lot of lessons that I've learned in my life and probably the same for you. I love this topic about finding blessings. And I just want to think about that for a minute. Many, many years ago, I had an appointment with a friend. We were going to do some planning together. This was in the time way before we had cell phones and our calendar on our cell phone. We actually carried around paper calendars with us. And I had gone to this meeting and we were sitting there talking about some dates. And we looked at the one date that seemed to be the prime date for what we were planning. And I had written on that calendar on that day, blessings. And I was like, I don't remember what this is, but I think it's fine. I think we can plan the thing. And um, I was with actually David Butler and he said to me, well, what is this? And I was like, well, I don't know, but I'll remember eventually. And he said, do you schedule your own blessings? And I was like, no, I don't schedule my own blessings. And then he was like, well, then what is it? And I was like, I don't know, but let's just move forward with what we're doing and it will come to me. And we finished our whole planning meeting and then at the end of the meeting, he said to me, I think you schedule your own blessings. And I was like, who schedules their own blessings? And why would I do that? What would the blessings even be? And so a couple days later, I was talking to my sister and she was like, remember what we're doing on this Sunday? And she had just adopted two babies and they were going to bless the babies on that Sunday, which is why I had written blessings because there was two babies and that was the day they were going to get blessed. So right when I got off the phone with her, I texted David Butler back and said to him, I know what the thing is. It's I have two baby blessings on the same day on Sunday. And he wrote back and said, it was funner when you scheduled your own blessings. And we laughed so hard about that. Well, I ended up going out the next day and buying a calendar and scheduling blessings for him for the entire next year, just because it seemed so fun. And he hung that calendar in his seminary office and he would text me on the days that were going to be a blessing day. And it actually ended up being really awesome because he started to be really like cognizant of what was happening that day, what was going on that day, what were the blessings that were going to come on that day. And as we think about finding blessings, I think one of the lessons that we learn is we actually have to be prepared to be looking for the blessings. But there's another element to that, and it's been mentioned several times tonight, which I really love, and it's the part about listing the blessings. And what would be the importance in listing the blessings? I love the lesson we learn in the Book of Mormon. I'm gonna be in Alma chapter 26. And this is the point in the journey when Ammon and his brethren are all going to come back together after their mission. And I just love to imagine them all together sitting somewhere and, and just doing that look back over everything that has just happened. Hopefully you have all had the experience of 
watching a missionary return home, whether that's someone who served from your own immediate family or your extended family. And you know, one of the things missionaries love to do the most is to be able to watch those, look back and list those blessings that happened in their life. And as we think about those lists and those blessings, how all those memories come back and what we knew about God because of those. And that's what happens on this night with Ammon and his brethren. They all get together. And in verse two, he says this, and now I ask, what great blessings has he bestowed upon us? Can you tell? And then Alma 26 is going to be a listing of the blessings. That's what happens for this whole chapter. It's just a list of blessings that they capture. And one of the things I love about them have to do a lot with what Jason was teaching us. And it's that not all the blessings were good. They didn't just write their best days. Some of the blessings came on the hardest days. One of the things I love the most is the very last verse in this chapter, verse 37. Um, one of the last sentences says this, now this is my joy and my great thanksgiving. And I love the thought of this, that this list of memories, this list of blessings that they had experienced became their joy and their great thanksgiving. And I want to think for a minute what those lists might look like and the power of those lists. Last year, my son Garrett was over. He came home for the bye week during the football season. He plays football. And it had been a really hard, hard year. And part of the reason why they came home was just because they needed a pick up and that time to just settle back in and get ready to go back into that season. And we were hoping for a better season. And I was cooking him breakfast one morning and he's huge, everybody. And so for breakfast, he eats six eggs, no matter what, for breakfast and half a pound of sausage and some bacon. So it's a gigantic breakfast. And I was putting it all together. And as I was making it, he was sitting at the counter and his wife was sitting on a chair in the family room. And he said to me, mom, why do you think the Lord has blessed me with such a hard season? And then I remember his wife saying, wait a minute, why did you use the word blessed? And we all laughed about that for a minute, but it was interesting because I thought about that a lot for the rest of the season and how that had been his thought is, is why did the Lord bless me with this hard thing this year? Because he knew the Lord had met him here, that he was part of his journey here. But what, what was the blessing that was going to come out of that hard season? It's interesting because a year later now, um, we're in a different NFL year. And um, if you follow me on Instagram, you know I posted in my stories yesterday that Garrett is up for the Pro Bowl this year. And you can vote for that, for that to happen because he's having his best year of his career. In fact, currently he is the number one left tackle in the entire NFL. Now, if I were to tell you why that had happened this year, I would tell you it's because of the blessings that came from the hard year last year. That's how we've gotten to this point. And listing those blessings is such a powerful reminder of what we learned about, that the Lord will meet us in that journey, even in the hard parts of that journey, and he will bless us there. And there is something really important about taking the time to list those blessings. This listing of blessings doesn't just happen in the in Alma, in Alma 26. It actually happens a couple times in the Book of Mormon. And another time that I love in the Old Testament, in Deuteronomy chapter 28, there is another listing of blessings. And it's so fun to kind of go through and look at the Alma 26 chapter and then look at this Deuteronomy 28 chapter because it will give you ideas of how to start making your own list. One Thanksgiving, we took that um, quote um, where it, it, he talked about what, as you look back, what has happened, can you tell? We just wrote it at the top of a poster board and hung it on our pantry doors. And every time people open the pantry, they would write with a Sharpie all of the list of the things that he had blessed us with. It was one of my favorite Thanksgivings we've ever had with, was capturing that list 
Um, I also love in Deuteronomy 28 how this one starts because in verse 22 it says, and all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. And then he starts listing all these blessings. You're gonna be blessed in the city and you're gonna be blessed in the field and um, your cattle and your flocks and blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. And you're gonna be blessed when you come in and when you go out, it, it lists everywhere the Lord could possibly bless you. And I just love the thought of that. Plus, don't you love when it says these blessings that are gonna come on thee and overtake thee? Who doesn't want to be overtaken by blessings right now in your life? I love a challenge we were actually given by the prophet in this last general conference. When he gave his talk in the Sunday morning session, there was one part where he said this, as you study your scriptures during the next six months, I encourage you to make a list of all that the Lord has promised he will do for covenant Israel. I think you will be astounded. Ponder these promises. Talk about them with your family and friends. Then live and watch for these promises to be fulfilled in your own life. Okay, I want you to think about some of these invitations he gave us. To ponder them, the blessings to covenant Israel, to talk about them. And he wanted us to talk about them with both our family and our friends, that, that it would fill up our conversations, watching for these promises that were given to covenant Israel. And then I love when he said, live and watch for them in your own life. So ponder, talk about, live and watch for these blessings or these promises that were promised to covenant Israel. Now you might be wondering, well, how do I how do I find these promises? How, how where would I look for them? And I love that he tells us you we should be doing it every time we study the scriptures, as we go through the next six months. One really great example of one is the one that we just heard from Jason when he said that one scripture that I love: "The Lord will meet you there, and He will be with you, and He will stay with you until you reach the promised land." That is a promise to covenant Israel. One of the other things that you could consider doing is to look up the word blessing on your phone in the scripture app. It's interesting because did you know that word is going to show up a thousand and twenty seven times? That's how many times you're going to find it in scripture. And as you start searching through all of those verses, all of those references, you're going to start capturing these promises to covenant Israel. They're just sprinkled all the way through scripture, everywhere in there. And as we look at what those promises were for them, it actually helps us to start looking for, okay, how am I experiencing that promise in my own life? Right after general conference, I decided I was really interesting, interested in capturing those promises. And so I actually gathered together with a group of women on Instagram at a place called Inklings Institute. And we have started looking for these promises and capturing them and keeping track of them every single week as we go between now and when General Conference starts. So it's been six weeks since General Conference. And let me just read to you some of these promises for Covenant Israel that we are capturing. Um, I keep a really long list of the things that I'm learning from the scriptures, but then at the end of every week, I just shorten it into one phrase that I can remember. This is who God is, and this is what he has promised. And the first one is a God who promises, provides, and prevails. The second one is a promise where he said, I will be with thee. I love the third promise that is found in the book of Joshua. God hath chosen thee. And it's also found in the book of Numbers. And then also in the book of Numbers, um, of all the things that God has promised, not one good thing hath failed. Don't you love the thought of that promise? He said, I will bless you and keep you. The one we've been studying this week says, the Lord goeth with you to fight for you. These blessings, these promises are doing two things for me. First, it is doing what President Nelson suggested. I am starting to watch for those promises in my own life. As I just go about the ordinary details of my life, I'm watching for the moments when he's going to fight 
for me. I'm watching for the moments when he's going to meet me there. I'm holding on to that promise that the good things he's told me will happen, won't fail, that they're really going to take place in my life. I've learned to start watching for a God who makes promises, a God who provides, and a God who prevails in my life. I want to tell you about another experience that I had many, many years ago when our second son, Joshua, was diagnosed with diabetes. That was a really hard year for us. And sometimes in the hard years, when we're blessed with those hard seasons, it's hard to see the good things that are happening. And I can remember being prompted one day, we were at the Cracker Barrel eating dinner, and I saw this blessing jar. We didn't have very much money at the time, but I saw this when I walked in and I couldn't stop thinking about it. And so I bought it on our way out. I just felt like it was something I had to have. And I started keeping track of the blessings and keeping them in this jar. Every time I saw a blessing during that hard year, I just filled up this jar. And on the particularly hard days, I would go through and read some of the blessings that were in there. That's a practice that has continued throughout my life, that listing of the blessings in the hard things and the remembering of the blessings. I believe there is great power in the remembering. And I want to um, just share one example of that from the scriptures. In the book of Samuel, there is a woman by the name of Hannah who wants to have a baby so bad, but she can't. And for years she is barren and she can't have that baby. And then she one day went up, she rose up and she went to the temple and it tells us she came in an abundance of grief and she poured out her heart to the Lord and she just prayed and she made a promise, a covenant, a vow. And she said, if you would remember me and if you would send me a baby, I will give that baby to the Lord for all the rest of the days of his life. And I love when she was done praying, she left the temple and it tells us, and she wasn't sad after she poured out her heart to the Lord. Well, a baby came and that baby was named Samuel. And just as she promised she would, she gave that baby to the Lord. He was raised up by a prophet to be a prophet. That's what happened. And so when he was just a little boy, she gave him to that prophet to be raised up. And here is my favorite part of the story that you might miss if you're not looking for it. Once a year, she got to see this little boy. And when she came, she would bring him a handmade little coat. Every year, he got a new handmade coat from his mom. Now, how do we know that that's what happened every year? Well, it's because there's one verse in 1 Samuel 2, verse 19. It says, moreover, his mother made him a little coat and brought it to him from year to year when she came up with her husband to offer the yearly sacrifice. That coat must have been really important to Samuel for him to have written it in scripture, for him to have taken the time, put a little verse right in scripture to tell us about those little coats his mom used to make him. And I love the lesson that we learn from that, that there is a power of remembering. There's a power that comes when we look and we don't just um, try to find those blessings, but we actually remember those blessings in our life. As I close today, I just want to close with one of my favorite promises to Covenant Israel that I have found since the prophet gave us that invitation to be finding those blessings, to be capturing those promises. Um, this is a, a promise that was given clear back when Aaron was alive, but it is a promise that is still ours today, a blessing that is still ours today. And he says this, speak unto Aaron and unto his sons. I'm in number six, 23. On this wise shall ye bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, the Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel and I will bless them. Oh, isn't that a great 
set of verses for finding the blessings. And maybe that's something you can think about as you enter into this Thanksgiving week that's coming up. And maybe you'll sit around with your family. You might be in person. You might be over Zoom. But maybe you will list the blessings of 2020, the things, the times, the events where you saw the hand of the Lord working in your life. In our family, we keep a little journal every Thanksgiving. It's just a Thanksgiving journal. That's the only thing that it's for. I keep it with our Thanksgiving decorations and I pull it out for Thanksgiving dinner and we write the year and we list the blessings. And I love that record of our family, just like Samuel's little coat, that record once a year from our family of finding those blessings of the Lord. And I testify to you that as we learn to recognize and list and remember those blessings, our testimony of the Lord will be strengthened. And I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Emily, I love that message. It, it made me think while you were talking, it made me think about how, you know, as we as we look for these blessings, it really is kind of, it's like, kind of like a treasure hunt that we're, we're when you're on a treasure hunt, you're everything that you find is part of the adventure, you know, and when you find those blessings and you remember them, like you talked about, then that's that's the treasure. That's the gold. And I, I love how you talked about how the, the joy comes from remembering. And it's it, I just love that. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I love that talk. I love to hear Emily speak. I love to hear her teach. And you talk about listing. Uh, one of the things I started to do after President Iring suggested it is to write down things. In other words, it's uh, I, I make lists, but I write details of some of the blessings that I have been showered with just uh, an incident, you know, an experience. And it's important. It, it lifts my soul to go back and read those. Oh, yes, he did do that for me. And I, I wondered what was happening. Why did I forget that? Why did he have me go back? I don't, I just love to hear you speak. You always leave me a lot to think about. Oh, love that's you. So you. And I love that Elder Irene talk too. Those, those two together, that Elder Irene talk and the uh -huh. present talk together it's a good reminder for us yeah yeah lots of searching and finding of of things to be grateful for things to be thankful for this week and and i love gosh that family tradition of you know starting that and what a what a blessing that would be 10 years from now to have that record what a what a great challenge for all of us uh we can start this week i love that well, thank you so much, Emily. And let us know, those of you who are watching at home, let us know what you loved about em Emily's talk. What stood out to you the most? Let us know in the comments. And we'd love to, to hear what your thoughts are here in real time. And uh, we'll go ahead and end things up for tonight's fireside. This has been, this has just been amazing. And seriously, thank you all for sharing your testimonies and your feedback and your personal stories. I just, I couldn't think of a better way to go into this Thanksgiving week. So thank you so much for spending your evening with us. We'll finish things off with a closing prayer. And then just like we have in previous weeks, we'll hang around for a few minutes and chat, catch up before Thanksgiving. And then we'll, we'll keep, we'll kick things off until our next fireside. So with that, we'll have our closing prayer by Jason. Our dear Heavenly Father, we're grateful for this evening and for the time that we have had to spend together. We're grateful for the blessing of the technology that allows it to happen. We're grateful for the blessings that are poured down on each of us. And we pray this week that we will each spend time looking for and recognizing thy goodness and thy hand in each of our lives and then turning and sharing with others and striving to find those that need help, those that need emotional and physical uplift and reaching out to them, sharing thy spirit with them in a way that can bless those around us is our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen.
thank you guys again for being with us on the fireside. There's a, a question that I asked last week that I've been dying to ask you guys as well, especially since this is Thanksgiving week. What What is your favorite Thanksgiving uh, dessert? What is your favorite Thanksgiving dessert? That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Mary Ellen? Anything chocolate. <laughs> Oh, I love it. I love Anything it so chocolate. <laughs> yeah. Pumpkin pie is like an interesting one because I like pumpkin pie, but then like the, you can make pumpkin pie anytime. But if I had a pumpkin pie yeah. in July, I'd be like, nah. <laughs> but for some reason at Thanksgiving, it's like, oh, yeah, that is exactly so what I want. It's just, yeah, yeah. I don't know what it is. I do, I do love pumpkin pie, but it seems like only on like three days a year. <laughs> who's sad that i'm gonna say stuffing yeah i don't really have a favorite thanksgiving dessert but i can eat stuffing all day long for three days i love stuffing <laughs> stuffing is by yeah, far my yeah. favorite yeah yeah, yeah yeah there was okay this is horrible but <laughs> one year my dad and my uncle uh they they love garlic and wanted to see if it was possible to put too much garlic in food. And so they made stuffing with about 30 cloves of garlic. And it, a clove is like, it, it, for those of you, if you're not familiar with garlic, you've got the head, which is like the big thing, the bulb. And then all the little tiny pieces are cloves. And they put about 30 cloves of garlic in the stuffing. And it was garlicky. The first, it was edible. Barely, but it was edible <laughs> the first night, and it just got more and more potent every day after. So there were not very many leftovers that year. That's for sure. It was, it our mother like used to put uh, our mother used to put coins in the in the dressing. She would really? give them a good bath. Yeah, she'd boil them, and then she'd put dimes, nickels, quarters. This was, uh, I can look back farther than 10 years. I, you know, I look back 70 years. I love that. Yeah, so Thanksgiving, and we so all good. are so hoping to get <laughs> oh, She just that. baked it in there. Oh. <laughs> That's so great. That's so great. My, my mission president would do something similar, but with uh, with paper bills. And so he'd he'd take a ten dollar bill or something and would wrap it up super tight and put it in a straw to protect it, and then um, and then would hide it in fruit or sometimes that you know would wrap a piece of chocolate with the bill and then the regular wrapping around it. So you wouldn't know that the bill was in there, so. Like that was part of the that was part of the surprise was okay where did he hide it this year you know that's so fun. <laughs> we were cheap <laughs> quarters I love, it. I love it that's so great <laughs> so yeah. fun yeah we're stuck so doing like not in the bird stuffing I don't both my mom and what? my wife say you yeah, can't do it in the bird anymore it might get contaminated Just and not try it. Cooked. Oh, interesting. I don't know. Is that true? Boil them. You <laughs> both. <laughs> <laughs> One thing I started doing really? about. Uh, yeah, I know. What was that, Mary Ellen? <laughs> One thing I started doing years ago, about 20 years ago, was saying Thanksgiving instead of Thanksgiving. And just. Oh. Just that. Little change, giving time, mm -hmm. and uh, I know that's just just a slight little difference. But I always used to say Thanksgiving, and now I say Thanksgiving. And maybe you can't even catch the difference, but it's made a it's made a difference in the way I feel about the whole season of being thankful. Yeah, I that's that. so good. That is so great. That is so great. Yeah, and I've got a place here that says thanks and giving. And I thought, oh, I love the thought of that, of that mm -hmm. Thanksgiving Day be a day of the giving of thanks and just for the giving. Of, that's what we do all day long with our families. We cook together and we serve each other. And so sometimes the thought of just breaking that word up just a little bit, so good. Mm -hmm. This that. will be a Thanksgiving alone for me. So 
Oh. I'm going to go down to Neater's on the day before and get a big turkey sandwich and eat it on Thursday. I love. I'm that. still very. I'm still in a very cautious situation. Yes, because you have to be. and so many of us are challenges and also. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a it's going to be a Zoom Thanksgiving for a lot of us. Right. It? It's, it's going to be different be a, for a lot of us. Yeah. Very very unique one one that I'm sure we'll never forget. That's for sure. So, yeah. well, thank you again all for being a part of tonight's fireside and to all of you who are thanks, with us. Thanks for not sending home. me to the basement. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're glad to work for it worked for everybody for the most part. And, and so for all of you who are watching at home, we hope that you have a fantastic Thanksgiving, whatever that may look like, and that you're able to, to feel of our love for you as well as God's love for you. And, uh, and hopefully you're able to spend some time with your family, whether in person or through FaceTime or through technology, uh, the different types of technology that we have available today. So thank you so much for spending your Sunday evening with us. And we'll see you on another Our Turtle House Digital Fireside soon. Thank you so much and happy, thanks, happy Thanksgiving. <laughs>